Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead, please. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. I think uh, 30 seconds won't be enough for me to, to, to vent how I'm feeling about the cause. But the thing is super. I'll just try to summarize everything. But so far, it's not really that interesting. I think I'm losing your voice is kind of low a little. I said I said that for me, my experience for the course has is not that pleasing at all. From let me say from first module to, to the third module it was okay, but fourth and fifth maybe yeah, there are there are some there are something abstract and it's not really that fun. And the way the way they are doing the presentation I sometimes I don't really feel it because it's just us basically doing what the presenter is just showing us and, and sometimes when somebody has a question like forever for them to reply on this on this Slack channel. So for me the the cause is not that it's not hundred percent and I won't give you fifty percent or so. Thank you. <laughs> it's all right. Right. So please go ahead. Okay. Uh, did I hear Peter already? <laughs> yes, I think I heard it too. Though. But go ahead. Okay. Yes, uh, for me, uh, I'm on module four. Anyway, I know that uh, I've slowed down because of so many distractions. But uh, so far, I saw a little improvement on. Uh, on the examination. Initially, the exam, I saw questions, but the last set of exams, I saw improvement. And uh, some of the questions I saw in the exam are not really relevant somehow to what exactly we are doing. And I hope the main exam will not be like that, like somebody bringing something outside that, and uh, please say bring something, something from big data bringing things from big data, which we are not doing big data. I hope certain will not encounter them in the actual exam. And then uh, again, I observe that uh, a Python, sometimes they are updating. Uh, the, the syntax, they are updating from one is uh, kind of uh, obsolete or later version. These are some of the observances. And then uh, on uh, module four, I got stuck at a point, though I've not had time to try to clarify. When I reach uh, distribution plots, I saw the code that was written, line space, things like that, that no explanation I couldn't follow. I don't understand what that is saying. I'm trying to run it. It's not giving results. And sometimes when you want to fall on the tutorial explanation, the tutorial seems to just be lifting uh, things from the uh, the textbook and uh, teaching it that way. So where you get stuck, you go to the tutorial, you still see the same thing. So you cannot make any adjustment rather than to try to resort to other avenues to try to clarify. So some things have been slowing me down. And uh, I think if we are having more interactions, we can clear all these things uh, quickly. Though my distraction has not been able to make me post to Veve to clarify all that. So those have been my challenges and observations. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, I just want to get just one person and then start the presentation. Kalisus, please go ahead. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so far, so good from my own point of view. Um, the program has been a little bit um, more enlightening. Um, I know it's going to be a little bit difficult for people that are bouncing into this field for the first time, mm -hmm. uh, which requires more in depth explanation to them, which I know that is not what they are facing. But I have gotten a little bit of idea of it. And um, that's why sometimes I don't even normally complete your your Saturday's um, presentation. After a while, I, 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 I will download it and go through it. 
And um, apart from that, you have to um, undergo some other um, information by using the Google so that you can have more, because they cannot hear, you, you can't be taught everything 100%. You just give you an eye opener, then you go and get what you need. But so far, so good, the program has been okay. All I need to ask is that the, the, um, during the Saturday's um, class work he normally does, um, that, that sheet he uses, I, I find, I've, I've not gotten hands on it. So that's why I'm asking if there's a, a possibility I can get uh, hands on it. You understand? The one he, he, he presents during Saturday's uh, Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, um, everyone. Yeah, I appreciate your your suggestion, your statements, and your own verdict on how the course has been. Of course, um, it's um, it's an online course. Um, what we did, um, we made it such a way that you can always fall back to what you've learned before. So it's a self-paced course, and the videos for all the different um, modules are available for you for one year. So you can always fall back. So um, just like Kalisto said, um, we may not be able to show you everything or teach you everything. So you have your own opportunity to opportunity to go online, to have your own learning space, to learn more, get better at it, and then you will you understand that it's going to be um, easy. But then um, definitely we will find a way to organize another meeting with you and the instructor, so that everything can just be ironed. That those that have questions can also ask before we go into the main um, certificate exam. We just have a revision a revision time where, where you guys and the instructor have a time to discuss from module one to the end of the module on his own time and everybody will be available then. So you guys can just have a little interaction before the main certificate exams, all right? So what we will be doing here today is to show you um, um, how to do your presentation on the, on as a data analyst, all right? So Mr. Emmanuel, will be the one in charge of this whole um, phase. It will be the one showing you the different tools that you would be able to use and how you can go about your project defense. So, uh, Mr. Emmanuel, um, I don't know if you're with us here. Um, you can you can go ahead. Yeah, Thank I, you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Afternoon. So, um, yeah, so I heard your feedback about the training. Uh, I, I would suggest there is a survey um, from sent to every um, candidate, every student here to um, express themselves properly through writing and then. Um, somehow select the models they still need some form of clarification because at the end of the day it's the knowledge that matters right so um there should be a google form survey sent to every candidate here and um apart from the feedback that will be written there you can select okay i need the explanation in model four I need a special in model five, something like that, or I need four and five, something of that nature, so that we have that data. We can use that data and then um, be able to analyze what the instructor or the investor need to do to be able to uh, to solve the the issues that the data will present before us. So please, um, apart from what I've been said here. We need the raw data, so um, a survey form should be sent to every um, student um, so that they can um, put what they need so that we can address it accordingly. All right, so uh, we'll be. I'll go straight to what I need to show you guys. I believe in about. 30 to 45 minutes um i hope i'll be able to uh, do justice to this and then um, okay i'm sharing my screen please can you guys see my screen
Yes, I can see it. All right, nice. So um, if you know how to use PowerPoint, that is also fine. Uh, but we're trying to see in the work environment, sometimes you just have to get some stuff done almost immediately. And um, in order not to crack your head around, how is it going to look like, if the designs are going to be fine, um, how do I position some of the stuff? Um, in the workspace, we most time I recommend that uh, you get yourself used to come back to and this um this can you meet all that that is this meet um so we recommend that you get yourself used to Canva as a tool so that in a matter of minutes you can have um a very nice presentation delivered to your board to your manager to your team head whoever that person will be so i will try as much as possible to expose Canva to you guys properly and then show you how you can uh, yeah make your presentation for this um short course you are doing so uh first thing first uh if you are making a presentation or you want to design a presentation a slide um make sure you have your points written and typed in your microsoft word right now the advantage there is you will be able to check out for typos um you'll be able to check out for every um yeah grammatical error and all of that through microsoft word right some of these tools will not do not have the proper algorithms to to depict or yeah to show you that this is wrong or right because it's designed you might want to do something different so they don't know exactly what you're trying to do but the microsoft word uh, it has been designed for you for them to uh, pick out your your grammar your typo and then tell you that this could be better or if that's what you want you can ignore right so um first thing i want you to take note is that don't just come to canva or any tool or powerpoint their powerpoints can work directly because um powerpoint environment is embedded in um the microsoft itself right so that same algorithm in powerpoint you can still have um it can still the, the, the bring out errors when you are typing right so but while we advise you have that written in your world before you put in any of your design tool it's because somehow your mind will be all about how the design is if it's fine or not you will not be looking at certain typos and i think the very first thing you should take note of is in the professional world Typos just show that you are not competent. That's the first thing, right? So you, you probably they just feel like you don't know what you're doing. So you just have to avoid typo errors and as much as possible grammatical errors, right? So um, two tools you use your um, word to do all the typos and all of that. Then if you want a better grammar, you can copy that same thing you want to put in, let's say your for the chat or the slide you can copy then put it in in chat gpt for example and say okay rephrase this for me so the chat box will be able to um rephrase it so that you can have a proper proper um, grammatical statement so i'll be showing you some of the stuff and then how we're going to use that also you're using anaconda whatever you're using to um, analyze your data visualize your data uh, these tools themselves cannot be embedded in your slide so it is expected that when you have your, your chart or whatever you have you want to and you cannot type that as much as it's also possible to um, 
run those charts in the software itself, like plot them and all of that, it is advisable that from that part, that your dashboard, whichever tool you are using to analyze data, if you have something you want to analyze, you screenshot it, right? And then you place it in your in your slide so that people can see directly how it's supposed to be, not plotting it and all of that. So I'll be sharing some of the things, some of you should, of course, you should know how to snipe and all of that, but I'll just run through that. But majorly, I will dwell on Canva and how you can use it to make very um, nice presentation. So first thing is, um, if you're watching my screen, you come to canva.com. It's a free tool, however, there are premium versions. So um, what you need to do is just register, right? If you come to canva.com, register, right? That's create an account. And when you create an account, you will have, you see a home page like this, right? You see a home page like this. Um, the next thing, uh, Mr. Weber, please, are you recording this um, presentation? Yes, I'm doing that. Please, okay, so that they can have it later. So, um, you will see a dashboard like this. This is like the home page. And then, just look at my console, you will see presentations here, right? So, you can use Canva to do a lot of exciting stuff. So, it's more like you have this tool that can help you do correct draw, you have the tool that can help you do PowerPoint, you have the tool that can help you do animation, you have the tool that can help you do videos, and every form of design embedded in Canva, right? And um, different creators, different designers have come to create all these things for you to use. So you are just taking their templates and we are just it to what you have. Download it and you're good to go, right? So what I'll be showing you just how to play with templates to look like what you want, maybe your brand and all those things, then you're good to go. So um, you have presentation here. So you just click the presentation, right? And when you do that, it will bring up other options, kind of presentation you want to do, right? So you want to do talking presentation, yeah, you can use to create online course, as your slide is going, your face is somewhere down there, your voice, people say, when you see your face, you can do that. You can have different, different forms of presentation, right? So, um, so I clicked the presentation first, and these guys appeared here. So I will click this other presentation, right? Now, Sorry, I don't know what happened. My mic went off. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. I can hear you. I can hear you. Sorry, I think my network um, muted me. So, first thing I said, you click this presentation that is here, right? And then these guys will appear. Then you click the first one, right? Because the second one is more like you're doing a talking presentation, like an online course. You want to create a course, or you want to do where your webcam will be on, and someone is seeing you down there. Now that is for talking presentation. There's a presentation that okay, some mobile phone. Someone sees it, you know that like, okay, this is very uh, mobile responsive and all of that, right? So I'm clicking the first one, and it will redirect me to the. Um, we call the workstation, right? So this is where all of the work will be done. This is where you will do your presentation. This is where you will do all of your editing. Now, by your side left are tools you can use. However, for the sake of this presentation, I will just stick to things you need, right? So that it's not, it's not going to be too crowded information for you. So now, these are templates you can pick from, right? These are templates you can pick for, already made for you. What you need to do now is decide, okay, I want this one, I don't want this one. So there are a lot of them, you can keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and all of that. Some of them have paid 
templates, some are free templates and all of that. So um, I will pick, I'm just picking the first one so that we can just get right to it, right? So I'm picking this first one, I just click it, right? So um, it will also display other pages around that same template, right? So if I just want to use one or three, I can just select three or so. But imagine that I want to use all. So for the sake of this presentation, just apply all pages, right? For the template. So I'll go back again. Now, this is the template I want to use. If I want to use this one to show me all the slides in this particular presentation. But if I want to use this one, it's also going to show me all the slides in this presentation, right? So let's imagine that this is the one that tickled my fancy. Like, I love the design. I love everything about it. So I will just apply the 10 pages, right? So I click apply 10 pages. And um, all the pages will appear here for me to customize, right? Now I can do whatever I want to do. So you see some slide like man, this guy knows how to do it. So most of those are just Canva designs. People have done it and just pick it and the slide you don't want to delete, the slide you want to duplicate, you add more. So all of that, right? So um first thing you pick the template you want first. Then down here, your by your left hand side, that's where my cursor is. Your left hand side, these are tools you can use to also implement better um, customization, right? The text, upload, and all of that. Now, if you have pictures, like you're taking screenshots and all of that, here, yeah, uploads is where you pick. You can upload files here, right? So any of the files you upload here, you can use them in your designs, right? So, um, Canva have their own pictures and everything you can use if you want to pick. That's where you see these photos, right? So these are Canva photos. There are millions of photos. You can use as many as you want. But if you have your own photos, you don't want to use that of Canva, right? So okay, maybe you did a screenshot or you have your own face. You want to put it like um, presented by so and so and you have this nice portrait picture you want to use. You just come and upload, right? You come here, you click upload, then upload from your computer, and then it's going to show here, right? So, okay, so um, you click upload, you upload from your computer, anything, and then you have it. Uh, let, me, let me do one, let me just see if I can get a nice picture. So let me see this guy. Um, something smaller. So let me see this guy. I'm uploading this WhatsApp picture here. So you can see it has been uploaded, right? You can see it has been uploaded. So it's the same thing as drag and drop. You can just drag it from anywhere and drop it to upload. So same thing. So you upload from the file, it will appear, and then you can use the picture if you want to do that, right? So that's how, um, so when you open your Canva, you click presentation, then you keep, click the template you want to use. The best thing to do now is upload so that you have all your materials ready. It's not when you need it to now start uploading. You can just come click upload them, go back all the pictures you want to use, logo and everything, and put them here, right? So you can put them here and start using it. So after that, you can now fall back to the templates here and start editing. So for example, it's like Microsoft Word, nothing special, right? So you come here, say, okay, um, data analysis, um, presentation by, let's say, uh, BAT, right? Okay, data analysis presentation by BAT. Um, so if you type it, it's going to be bigger and all of that. So same thing like Microsoft, you come here and highlight them, right? So um, for those of you, you're not seeing my mouse, so you don't know how I'm highlighting. It's still the same thing like Microsoft. You click, you drag, and then you highlight it, right? Or you double click 
and control A. Same thing as I'll hi highlight in Microsoft Word, right? So anything I want to I highlight, I can go here like this guy created by team. If I double click inside it like this, right? I can control A to highlight only this guy, right? But this is the guy I want to change the font type so that it will look fine and all of that. So I double click here, right? I double click and then control A to highlight just that. Then I can come here and reduce the size and everything, or I can just click here and say, okay, I want it to be like 50, right? Okay, 50 small, I can do like 70, right? Okay, 70 small, I can do like 80. Get toys, right? So if it is fine, and then you're good, right? So, okay, you can still feel like I do not want this font, right? You can still double click, highlight, and then choose different fonts, right? So, let me say, I like, I like this Fedraco one, right? So, right? So, it's giving me a different presentation, right? So, you can do whatever you want to do. Just the way you are, you're, you're doing with your Microsoft Word, that's how um, you can also change the phone on time. Everything has been there by parts. You can make it like, okay, I don't want to put it here. Just click once, not double click. You click once, right? When you click once, it's going to show you all of this stuff around that. It shows that, okay, I can maneuver the entire shape inside it right so i can just drag and drop anywhere i want to do that right so here is to you want to twist and all of that right so you can increase reduce whatever you want to do all i'm saying is that if you double click you are affecting the right up if you click once you are affecting the shape completely right so if i click once i'm affecting everything right but if I want to change data, I have to double click inside, right? So that I can change it to, oh, I want it to be like, right? You can do that. So anything you're doing, when you click once, you cannot affect the, you cannot affect any change in the right of, right? But when you double click, you can now make your changes, right? Because you can be like, oh, I want to make data analysis, I want to change the color of just the data analysis to be um, red, right? You can do that, right? So it's all about what you feel like doing. So they've given you several templates. You can just add your own finesse around the whole thing, right? But some of it are not good with colors. Don't do color right now because you have all the liberty to do. So you can just stick to their colors and just but those of you that know color, like you are good with all the color combination, you can make a lot of changes, right? Now, that's the first thing. How to, I, I just explain how to reconfigure the fonts, right? Change the color, change the font, change the size, make it look like the way anything you want to do, right? It's up to you. Then, Another information that you need to know when using Canva is that as much as most of the templates are free, Canva is not an NGO. They are here to make money, right? So you need to also be careful to know the things that are free in it and the things that are paid, right? Now, there are free templates. However, there are certain things that Canva will drop in the template itself that are to be paid for if you are to use it. So my advice is if you're using the Canva, this is slide one, make sure you click everything there that you want to still keep. Click it and see. When you click, you will see the ones that have watermark. So you have to delete it else you will pay to use that particular watermark, right? Now, for example, this is the logo here. Yeah? So I'll click it once, right? There's no um, label showing that it's watermark that means I have to pay. So this is free. Like I can comfortably use this, but if I don't need it, I can delete it, right? Now this is all, another symbol here, right? This symbol is also free. This image you are seeing here is free. 
So let me reduce it so that it will not affect our design properly. So this symbol is free. Now, I will check this guy. You see, this guy has remove watermark. You see, as insignificant as this is, that's their trick of also making money. Probably you need this thing here, which is absolutely useless based on what we're trying to do, right? So if you click it, it will tell you remove watermark, right? Now, if you don't remove this or delete this, when you are trying to download, when you're done with all your stuff, it's going to ask you to pay to download it because there's a watermark, there's something there that's meant for only paid users, right? So now, I don't need this, right? So I can easily just, please, you can use backspace or delete from your um, keyboard and then it's off, right? So if you say remove watermark, you have to pay. That means you need it, but you want to remove the watermark. And you can see the amount it is just to remove this particular stuff, right? So because we don't need it, please delete them. All you can do, there are a lot of free stuffs. You don't need all this extra whatever. However, you can even create it yourself. And this is it. Um, this, I don't need it. So I press backspace or delete button from my keyboard. That's how I delete. That's how I delete. Or here, it's already showing you, you can also delete it, right? So I've deleted it, but I like that stuff. So I can come to element here, right? I click element, there are shapes. So I, I can recreate that shape anywhere I want, right? I can recreate that same shape without spending anything, right? So just drag, drop, whatever, right? It's it's all it's all there, nothing special, right? So um let me change this so that I will not be doing too much color out here. So that's it. Right? So I just added that without necessarily using what Canva is giving me. So these things are here for you to use, but this is basically nothing, right? This is nothing. But it's still part of design. That's what that's the reason why I chose this template, but I like the design. So I just want to maintain design. So I just drop and drag and drop, right? So if you want to drop circle, just click the circle, it's going to come. All of these things here are, oh, I want to increase it, I want to reduce it, I want to increase it, I want to reduce it, right? Just drag and drop using your mouse, right? So, um, for example, I want to put this here or here, right? So, you can do all of this stuff without. So, you just play around. If you don't want it, Ctrl Z, same thing, you remove Ctrl Z, right? Same shortcut you have using Microsoft Word that are all applicable here. Now, created by or presented by my name, let's say, um, yeah, but, right? So you can put that here, and if you don't want the slant stuff, look at it here, you can remove it, right? You want it bold, you can bold it. Same thing, you want it catalog, you can do that. If you're showing like this, you come here, you drag. Simple. Now, I'm not wrapping. Same tools you have when using Microsoft Word. That's why I'm not going back around that pattern. So, um, all of these things are, if you can use Microsoft, you can use them. Italics is to make it slant, right? If it slants, click it to remove it. If this board is highlighted, that means the write up is bold. You can unhighlight it and it will be simple, right? Can underline it. This is underline. Same thing, right? So it's same thing like using your Microsoft Word. But in this setting, we have done all the designs for you. So you don't want this logo and delete it. Put your own logo, but I'm keeping that just for the sake of this presentation. And then I'm making this board. I want to make this um, that blue will also go here. Yeah. So do that so uh this is like your first slide right so now we're going to the next one the table of content so in your presentation you have to draw people to what you want right okay what they should expect so um 
First one is about projects. Second slide is scope of the project. Third slide is the objective of the project. Fourth slide is how data were um, extracted. Fifth slide, results and analysis. Six slides, recommendation, right? So you know what you want and you know how to put it. So it's best you always have a table of contents where you write so that anyone that is checking through your work can just go straight to, okay, this is slide six. So let me just see the results. I don't need to hear all this other stuff, right? So um, like I said, first rule, any slide you enter, rule number one, click everything you have there to see the things that are filled, right? Click this guy, no watermark. Click this guy, no watermark. Click this guy, no watermark. Click this guy, is a watermark. I delete you, right? So every other thing here is free for me to use, right? So, okay, we have the table of content. We have this, you can edit, right? You don't want it this way, you can do whatever. So, for example, I'll bring this back. For example, this table of content, but I don't want it this way. I can drag this guy. I mean, it's not, I can do that. So I drag. And then maybe I place it this way. Maybe this is where I want it to look like, right? And I've told you guys you can reduce the font. So okay, let me use 90. You can reduce the font. You can change whatever you want to this. Let's say this. Let me see what this could look like. That's that's big. Okay, so let's use that. Sorry. Right. So I want this. I can use this. And um, for example, I have. I want to run my table upon like this. I just drag them. Like I said, if you want to move everything, click once, don't double click. Click once, then drag to where you want to keep it. This guy, click once, drag to where you want to keep it. Right? So I want to keep it like this. And if there are more, click once, right? Control D is duplicated. So I've duplicated the entire stuff. Right? So I'll do that again. I click, I click once, I drag and drop here. So maybe my table of contents are more than eight slides. I can still just come here, right, and add more slide, right? Use enter, like your keyboard, click enter, and then you can write extra, like extra page, right? But if I still want more, like more stuffs, I can. I can, I can click here once, right, and duplicate. So it will duplicate the entire four items there, right? So maybe I put it here, maybe it's not fine. I come here and say, okay, I delete one, right? I can drag three and drop them here. So I have more. There are still more, you click, you duplicate, you move them here. You click, you duplicate, Control D is duplicate, right? Move them here. You click, you duplicate, you move them here. So, depending on how many stuff you have, you can play around your stuff like this. So, Control D gives you opportunity to duplicate stuff the way you want them, right? So, like this guy, I like this guy. I want to get. I can Control D to give me another one, right? Control D again, give me another one, right? So, this guy maybe okay. This I like this guy. I can Control D and bring it here. Right, so I can play around it the way I want to. Right, so we are over here, part of my designs. Right, so it's 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 all yours to play with the way you want it. Enjoy yourself. If you don't like it, Control D. Every time you do, you don't like it, Control C. Sorry, Control Z or C, whichever you prefer. Right, so um. I'm deleting these guys, I don't need them, right? So you can play around it, and any stuff you want, you can control D. Even this guy, you can control D, right? You can control D again, right? So you can duplicate stuff that you want to, um, like I want to see more of that stuff in a particular size. So you can just control D and have more of such, right? So you can do that. So this guy, maybe you want to, you can drag him here, and say, I want to see you more, right? Reduce it. See all the arrow signs? Use the arrow signs here to reduce. You can reduce as much as you want, right? So let's let's do it this way. 
So I reduce here, and then maybe I want it again. I shoot this guy. It could be here. Easy. Maybe I don't want this guy again. Then I drag this guy. It could be here. Right? Like easy. Easy. Right? So it's up to you. Just drag, drop, reduce, just play around. If you've messed it up, you can choose it until when you want to get to. Now, another thing I want you guys to also understand is that when you're doing Canva, it takes data and then it should fix everything. Not much, anyways. But as long as you do it online, it takes data. However, this tool, you can use it offline. Right? So, this has done. Use your data to log in, to come to this page, to select your templates. And then you can put off your data and start doing all this dragging and dropping and doing all of this stuff. You can do them offline completely. However, everything you do will not be saved. So, for whatever reason, you system goes off, something happens, all your hard work will start from square one. But while I'm working online, it is saving automatically in milliseconds is saving so anything that happens i can come back to the same spot that's the only advantage using canva online but smartly when you're done with slide one put on your data it will automatically save to that point there's nothing like control s like oh i'm saving control s whatever it's saving so you don't need to do that it needs data to save right so when you on put on your template and everything to cash everything he needs then you can go off when you're done with slide one put back your data and then you can um it, it will automatically save whenever your data is on and then you can draw your corrections and everything you then you put on the data again and you save it right for those of you that data is so much of an issue right you can do that so here is it even while you're working i can't show you the offline because if i go offline you will not hear me right so i can't go offline but look at this um tool here right you'll see this icon here so icon is showing all changes saved so this uh, mark good mark here showing that it's been saved if i were to be offline you will not see this good it will be showing dots 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 like three dots show three dots to tell you that it's not saving it will even prompt you that all your changes are not saved do you want to continue you can say yes i want to continue right so you continue all your stuff without saving it because it's not online right but it's saving you a lot of data and then you cannot upload pictures when you're offline because it needs to download it to its own server right so you can't upload pictures when you are offline so you just need to know okay because i want to upload picture you do go online then you can upload the picture when it's fully downloaded you can go offline and then all of that and when you're offline your uploaded picture sometimes here will not show you the picture it might not load them like to just show that you have things there but they are not loaded so it's only when you're online to show you them like this so you can always use them when you want to do what you want to do right so um that's it um now let's say the about or slide so about or like about the project or let's say scoop okay scoop of project right so i control a i move this guy to 90 and then and I use the same font. Okay, let me use this guy. So I use this font. Yeah, this font is nice. So I, I check. I move this guy because I know he's already a big guy. This is free. And then there's a right, there's a picture here for me, and the picture is also free. So I think I want to keep the picture, right? So you can keep the picture. You can exchange the picture with your own picture. And this is another thing. So this is a picture. If you delete it, it will show you this frame. Now, what this frame is saying is that any picture you put here will take the shape of this frame, no matter how the picture is. 
So this is, for example, this girl, this picture here. If I put it there, it will take this frame. Right? So I want to change it to this girl, it will take that frame. I'll change it to these guys, it will take this frame. That's the work of the frame. Right? Now, I like this one. So I can leave it like that. But if there's no frame, for example, this, if this picture is here, there's no frame. Right? So any other picture I bring here, if I delete, let me do that. So if I delete this guy, this picture, it will not show me any frame that, oh, you have a frame there, right? But when there's a frame, you will see this shape, this same design, this color like this. So that's that default color for frame, right? So you are just to take your picture, drag it to that spot to take the shape of that stuff. So you can, I, should, I shouldn't do that. It's a bit, a bit too much for you. But you can add frames, right? These are frames, like you can add a lot of frames for yourself. So let me do this. Maybe I don't want this frame that is there. And I want, um, let, me pick, let me pick something like this. So I want this kind of frame here. I don't do that. I don't do this. So, so I want this kind of frame because I want to put two pictures here to represent what I want, right? So I can go there now and then I can put. Nice. I can drag this and put this scale and then um yeah I can put these guys here right so two frames because I want two frames I don't want two frames I go back to one frame I don't need a frame at all I remove everything right so this is it it's all you need that's, that's it so if you have this slide and the next slide you want to do, you still want to use this same design. Maybe you don't want to use this particular design for the next slide. You want to use the same design. You can duplicate this page, right? Come here, you will see this icon, the three dots icon. Click it, and you see duplicate page, right? So here I duplicate the page. It's going to appear as slide four. So I have slide three, slide two, this slide three, this slide four. Right, so maybe here I say scope of project continue. Right, maybe I'm still dealing with that particular page, and this space is not enough. I want to continue use the same thing. So I can duplicate that same slide and then continue what I'm saying about the scope of the project. Maybe here it's too small for me to talk about it. Right, so whatever you want to do, you can do here also. Maybe I've duplicated, I'm like, I don't need it. You can delete that same slide, right? You can delete. And then have what you want now all these slides are there and anyone you want and once you don't want you can delete them like say this guy i don't need it you can delete it or this guy i don't need it you can delete it so that's how it's done just reconfigure to what you want right and then every other thing is play with them play with it now what you have done from your microsoft word is to now copy them. So anytime you slide one or scope of project, go to Microsoft, highlight, control C, come here, highlight all of these, and then paste. It's going to take this. So you don't need to type them again, right? Now let's do this. This is presentation. Okay, let me write something. Let me write anything here, right? So, um, so this is it. So, like I said, copy them, right? Control A, Control C, which is copy. You can come here, Control A, right? Control A, Control V, and paste the rubbish there, right? So, same thing. Once you copy there, just come here and Control Paste. It will give you some. Here, they are not going to tell you, oh, it's not correct, it's correct. You see, nothing highlighted here. If you type this in Microsoft Word, you know what it's going to give you red lines everywhere. But well, here is design, so nobody wants to know if you're correct or not because design is about freedom, right? So you might want to spare what the want to So it would be, it would not be nice for them to be telling you everything. However, yeah, yeah, I wanted to say that. Most times, it also tries to identify if what you are doing is still wrong or right, 
right? So it's going to highlight, and then you can still, um, if this was to be, let me say, I am spelling pre, let me do this way, pre jets. The pre jet is wrong, so I can right click and then to tell me projects, right? That's what I want to spell. So same thing. If you leave it like this, it's not going to highlight. But when you double click, it's going to tell you that, okay, are you sure you want to keep this stuff, which is the red line? Then if you, if there's an error, you right click, it's going to give you his own um, um, suggestion. Like, okay, this is supposed to be project. And then you can just click it and then you have it there. Same thing as Microsoft, but it's advisable, put everything down there in Microsoft. Here should just be about designing, making it look fine and nice because your slides, your presentation generally is as interesting as the slide itself. So the design is what keeps everyone glued to what you ever you're saying. So that's it. Um, add what you want to add, you remove what you want, and then you can create as many stuff as possible. Now this slide four, I think I've done here, yeah, I remove this. And these pictures are already showing cover, so they are watermarked. So these pictures are not free, so I have to delete it. This one is also not free, I have to delete it. Why this one is free? Your choice. You want to keep it, you want to delete it, your choice. So that's it. You do what you want to do. Now let me go to how you download and keep your stuff. So when you're done with the slides, imagine you're done with everything, you're good to go. Come to share up here. You see share. So you click share, right? And then you see download here, right? So you click download. So before you do this, come here. And that's if you don't want to do it later, right? Just rename it like my project, right? So you just rename it my project. So that is it for you. So you come, click download. Now it's giving you a suggestion that you should download them in PDFs format and all of that, right? So you can click here and see all that format. Like if it's ENG you want, please you want to download them in video format and all of that, you can pick any of these, right? So um, I'll maintain it because the slide, it should be PDF. So I come. I click download. I'm maintaining that. And it's telling me if I want to put all the pages, right? So these are all the pages, right? So if I just want to download just slide one, I can download only slide one or download all. So of course, you're downloading all because it's everything you've done. So go ahead and click download. Uh huh. Now, I cannot download because there are still free stuffs in the other slide that we did not touch, right? So it's telling me there are five premium images in the other slides that we not touch. So I want to proceed that to pay, right? So in case you encounter the stand we're encountering this. So in case you encounter this, you have to go back like, okay, that means, let me check. If you clear this, this one, there's a free stuff here. This page, I have to remove it. So this one is paid, I have to remove it. So you just have to clear all this so that our download will work. All these are free. This is paid. This is free. This is free. This is free. Um, this is paid. This is free. All of these are free. Um, slide nine. This is paid, of course. This is just to say, remove what that marks is paid. Remove it. So everything here, let me see this guy, is free. Uh -huh. See, these guys are clever. This one is free, but um, the icon for this is not free. I remove, this also is also not free. I remove, I delete, right? So that's where, that's our business model, right? So they also have to make money for us to enjoy the solution. So this, so I think we've removed everything possible. So I can come and then click my download. So it's downloading. 
right? So, so it's downloading. You can see it here. It's downloading. Now there are several times that the technology will not want you to download like twice or thrice for whatever reason. Um, because of hacking robots and all of that, right? So in order not to stress the whole downloading stuff from the system to just reduce security reasons. If you download and you want to keep downloading different stuff, different each time you're downloading it, it will be blocking it. So this is how you clear that. So imagine you've done this, you've downloaded and you you saw an error from your PDF and you're like, oh well, let me come back and clear my stuff, right? Let me come and fix the error. Or you send somebody and they make corrections and you want to come back. So you can always you most likely will download this like four, five, six times, depending on how many times you are seeing errors from the original version, right? Like from the downloaded version. So maybe you come back and you still want to download. So you come back to the same place and do the same thing, and then you click download. Now there's a possibility that it's my block, right? Look at it here. It just show that my attempt, this side attempt to download multiple files. Do you understand? So it's already showing based on different forms of security. It might be your own laptop security. It might be different forms of anything can happen to it, right? So if that happens, just come here and click. If your download hasn't started, click here. Sometimes it might be that your network was slow when you wanted to try the first time and then just did not download, right? So, or maybe you forgot to put on your network back to download. Several reasons. You might just pop this thing. So, once you have it, just click here. It will download, right? So, it will, it will act as if it's redirecting you and then it will download. You can see here that it's downloading, right? So, you can now go straight to your download and then you have your PDF downloaded already. Right, so that is what, um, yeah, that's how you download your final project from um, Canva. So you can always come to your download and then watch the PDF. So, um, so you can now see your your projects sometimes it's good to take them to your phones because sometimes we can read very well with our phones and laptops so just preview them to your phones and see that okay no typo error and all of that right so um yeah so that's basically all you guys need for now so that you don't so this is this is what we've done right so you can just go through the stuff and see that everything is intact, right? So you can always, so that is the PDF you will send to the university for them to um, look at what you have done. So for, th for those of you that don't know how to snipe, please, um, every system has a snipe tool. So just search for it. So you can come to search, search for the word snipe right or sniping whichever one so this is the tool right so you can open the tool right so um if you will be using it frequently pin it to your tax bar it's already pinned to mine so i can easily just click it there so um let me unpin it first so that it will not be there so um to do that again so i've completed it. it's not there so in case you're looking for it the snipe tool right first thing do not open just pin it to your tax bar pin it here if you pin it it will appear here so it gives you um so it, it, it makes it easier for you to always go to it when you need it right so um let's let's try something Let's try something. So, for example, I want to snipe this. I want to. Okay, this is my. Let's let's imagine that these are Python or Anaconda, Jupyter, whatever, Power BI, whatever interface, right? And you're doing your your you you've analyzed and the slides are here. Everything you want to take this result to 
the um to the slide right so um since i already have my snap to pin here i will just click it right what is happening here okay so i will just click the snipe and then i snipe all of this and then control s to save it so i put that in my downloads F1. So, um, so I've sniped that and I want to use it here. So, like I said, anything you want to upload, you come to upload, right? Come to upload and then you upload file. You click upload file. Then this is snipe stuff. Then I click to open. So it's downloading. You can see that it's downloading here. So it's completed. So for example, maybe I want to use it in slide five. So I can easily bring it here, right? And show that this is my result, right? So you can come here and put findings. Maybe call this findings. Drag this guy down a bit too. All right, I'll be definitely with this guy. Just put it in. Right, so your result sheet, try as much as possible to reduce too many exciting designs. So let's go straight to the point in your, when you are talking about your, your findings, right? So this is how you do it. So you just smile and then save it to your computer and then come to upload upload it to canva and then drag and drop it wherever you want to keep it right so that's how you do that so when you do that of course you print and you download and the other stuff so um that's it um every other thing here there are a lot of things that are not needed for this presentation but well, that's basically how you do that. So what we expect from you is that you do a very nice, clean, simple design. Um, screenshot your work from the, 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 the whatever tool you are using to analyze. Screenshot your findings and all those things. If you want to put them here, put them, make them visible. Download them in PDFs and then send to wherever uh, you are required to send. So when we'll be having a short conversation with every one of you, just a few minutes to just tell us how, what you did, what you analyzed and all of that. Beautiful part is that you can, at the end of the day, right, create, um, put it in your Google Drive, make it visible, right, put it in your Google Drive as your project, put it in your Google Drive, make it visible, copy the link and then put it in LinkedIn, right? In your profile. So when you go to all those things, you put it there, then attach that link. It's going to pick what you have done. So you have more visible um, employers looking at. They can always just go check your slide and see. Some might just be, be uh, excited about how you did your presentation and then that's it. So a lot of persons have used that trip also to get um, good job placement. So that's basically it and um, now I can entertain questions. So please, if you have questions, you can ask your question. Thank you. Okay, um, Kalistus, you can go ahead with your question. Yeah, um, uh, good afternoon. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Imanda, for the presentation, the lovely presentation. At least it has opened my eyes on that area of um, doing multiple values. I'm only I specialize in PowerPoint. My, my question is, after your design and everything, you downloaded in PDF, there's this kind of um, um, feeling you have when you are presenting using PowerPoint. Is there any way we can download it using PowerPoint presentation features to present our work? Because when you display your PDF, it's just showing just like a picture. But when you are presenting using PowerPoint, it gives you this uh, presentation feeling. Is there any way we can have that after designing using Canvas? Thank you. Okay, so um, there are two ways around that, right? Um, the, there are pros and cons around the presentation, especially when you are transferring that information or the the, uh, the document to another person, right? So now, if I'm using PowerPoint and you ask me to send my presentation, I'm not going to send you a PowerPoint presentation, right? Because um, one. It can be tampered with if I send you a PowerPoint presentation. It can be tampered, not just tampered with. If my version of PowerPoint is different from your version of PowerPoint, it can alter my my design. The way it's going in my own system will be different from the way it's showing your own system. So most times, if you are working in a copy set, I'm like, oh, send this. Even if it's PowerPoint, you must convert to a document form, a PDF format that cannot be altered, so that your design remains your design, your everything remains the way you want it to be, and nobody can alter your data, right? If you are using that, except although the reason. The only reason why we want to look at, okay, I want it to look like PowerPoint, is if you are presenting it yourself, right? So, of course, just of course. like what you are doing now, and um, you say present, I want to share your screen and present, right? You will use PowerPoint because you do not share the data with me or the, the, the document with me. You are just presenting from your end, right? So, in that setting, you can use PowerPoint. However, Canvas made provision for that also. So, if you need to make your own presentation without giving it to another person, you don't necessarily need to download. You can present. Right? Are you guys still seeing my screen? Okay. Yes, I'm seeing. I can I'm yes. seeing. So you can present. In presentation, you cannot have that level of whatever you want to do, the way it's doing. Do you understand? Like if you are seeing my screen, yes, right? I'm seeing. Yeah, so you yeah, can yeah. do that with this if you are required to make a direct presentation. Even presenting from here direct, you can see the same thing, right? So present full screen, present view, present a record. Like there are a whole lot of things that happen did not even get for that these guys have done because that is their major. That is where the business is. This is a unicorn. So basically, this is what they do every day. PowerPoint has that in Microsoft has a lot of things, so they're not really focused like, oh, we have to get that PowerPoint. But this is like advanced. They've advanced what you are supposed to do with PowerPoint, right? So you can make that presentation this way. In short, you can put sound. Like I can put this thing and make it look like one nice movie trailer. You can do all that. You can make it auto automate the way Microsoft and do much more. Like you can automate the write-ups, you can do a lot of animations far beyond what my um, PowerPoint is doing. So, but just to keep it simple, I just want you guys to understand the basics, right? So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Joseph, this is your question. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for this training. It's a plus to what we have been doing. I'm really grateful. So please, I want to know um, about uh, more about our project topics because I don't really know on what topic to go about. So I don't know if there is a list of topics that we can work on. 
Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Velvet, can you answer that question? Okay. Um, I, I thought you guys had an, an exposition of the project last week, um, of, um, last two weeks with Mr. Ezekiel. But what I, what I would do uh, for you guys either today or by Monday morning is to send you guys a list of projects that you can do. But what we suggest for you to do is based on what you've learned, based on your strengths and research that you can actually make on a good project topic that fits a particular um, industry you want, you can actually um, get a project topic from that. But we will still give you some list of topics, generic topics that you can still um, um look out for but we advise most times you go online um like um mr money talked about chat gpt recently so you can also use that particular tool um online platform to also make research on how to get a nice topic for a particular industry you want to focus on so um that's what you you can do but in case you need i will set up a couple of topics for you guys by today this evening or by monday morning Okay, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Yeah, Quadri, please go ahead. Quadri, are you there? You are still muted. Sorry. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you very well. Thank you very much. Though I came in it. So there's a question I want to ask. Our the um, project submission should the project just be about data ranking, data analysis alone, or are we required to make predictions on it? So that's the first question. So the second question is that the submission date I feel is, is kind of tight. If if there's an avenue for for it to be postponed to maybe around May period also. I don't know. Yeah, so those are my two questions. Thank you. Okay, so I think um, everything about projects itself, like projects, project submission, um, project exposition, project expectation and all of that, um, that should be what Mr. Velvet should answer with you guys. And I felt, and I know they've had an exposition on that. Um, I will not be the one to answer that because that is not where, uh, that is not my unit completely, not part of it. So um, Mr. Velvet will answer all of that question, but in this same call, he will answer your question. So I think he's, he will take note of that. But I think if you have any question about this presentation and about your project presentation, I will answer them. And that's the question I want to answer. So that I can exit and then um, Mr. Bebe will be there to answer any other question. Okay. So please, if you have questions for me, about this presentation, you can go ahead. So, uh, Mr. Peter, please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Emmanuel, for the presentation. I really appreciate uh, I'm not aware of this uh, Canvas uh, application before, but uh, you have just uh, exposed me to it. Thank you. Every day, applications and software keep coming and coming. <laughs> you to at least have some knowledge. Thank you so much. I hope I will become skillful in it and then go to pro level. Thank you so much. <laughs> then uh, I want to find out this sniping, sniping tool available in this uh, camera. Is the sniping tool the same as a uh, screenshot or print screen? Exactly. So I want to. Okay, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Anything can you still okay. capture in school? Yeah. Okay. okay, so and let me just then, add, uh, let me we're just add a little to um, the sniping um, so that you know exactly what you can do. For sprint screen, you will capture the whole of your screen. But with the sniping tool, you can capture just a, just an object. So what you want people to see, that is what you can capture with the sniping tool. So that is why most times we advise that you use your sniping tool instead of sprint screen. 
So you don't show them everything on your screen, including your time and all your ta um, task um, icons too. So that's why you should use this life too. Yeah, so that's just the well, the coming of it, right? So everything has the pros and cons. So um, ideally, well, snipe snipe the snipe tool helps to direct where you want to shoot your shot, right? You just direct it there and then you drag and you snipe. So, but you can if you do not have you definitely have a, every every laptop has that. So you should use that. But if you use your screenshots, you can still crop it if you have to. to. That's if this is too hard for you. So that's just the uh, yeah. So if you screenshot, just to crop and make it look like you crop and remove what you don't need, right? But snipe is the best for that. But that's it. Okay. Thank you. Then the other question uh, you were saying on the canvas that uh, if you want to send uh, the project like uh, you put it on google drive and share the link with people so that they can view it and that mm -hmm. uh, that uh, you need to uh, use it uh, the canvas but if you are using a uh, powerpoint you may have to present it uh, real time uh, or you present it from your end but i was thinking because i've come across some uh, PowerPoints or Microsoft Word saved online that they would disable some tools like, for instance, the publish it, disable, you can't copy, you can't adjust, you can't make any amendment. You were saying somebody else can alter the project and all that. I thought there are tools mm -hmm. when you want to publish PowerPoint or something like that online or send to people, you disable some feature before you send so that the person cannot make adjustment, can only read it. I thought there are tools like that. Yes, yeah, so uh, let me correct the first one. So I'm not saying um, you, you can, you have to use Canva and then use Google Drive to send. That was like an extra thing I was talking about, right? So what I meant there was that, um, after your projects or while doing your project, when you're doing your projects, you can host your projects in a drive, like your Google Drive, and allow public access, right? That's if you want employers to see them. That has nothing to do with either Canva or PowerPoint. Any documents, you can host them to your Google Drive. Right? That was a different thing. So the advantage about hosting it is, okay, you, at least you have a link to share via LinkedIn and then people can have access to see your presentation, right? So that's a separate thing entirely. Now using PowerPoint, I'm not saying that you cannot use PowerPoint to send. However, you must be very careful about versions of systems. It's, it can be funny when you are using a lower version and somebody with the updated paid version of Microsoft wants to view your PowerPoint. It can be very funny. The same thing some of you make in um, doing um, CV and resume, you just do a lot of designs and when somebody wants to open up the system, everything is messed up. Because the versions and how you are, uh, how you, you are give access to that document other versions are not compatible with it, right? So compatibility is only what I was talking about when I'm saying the pros and cons of either using PowerPoint or Canva, right? So, but whichever, don't send documents in PowerPoint, except it is it was actually stated that way, that send them in PowerPoint, right? Do not send in PowerPoint arrange them and release them in PDFs. The person will be able to go through each slide very well. The person will be able to print it and look at it if he wants to print it. It's a whole lot better and flexible when you are sending any document in PDF because it is untouchable. It's just like that, right? So that does not mean you cannot send in PowerPoint. I'm just saying, 
now for this convert them to pdf even if you are using powerpoint to make this presentation send to the university right send them after you saved it save it in save that powerpoint in pdf format i believe you can also do that save that powerpoint in pdf format and send to whichever link you be asked to send them to right but every other thing you can use your powerpoint if you want to if you're comfortable with powerpoint also if you want to use canva do it but like I said, PowerPoints are limited by those designs you are seeing there. You have to be extra creative to be able to reset backgrounds and do a lot of things. But making proper official presentations, like with hundreds of templates for you to use, is best to use Canva. So it like, gives that freedom. Of, it's it's okay. exciting when you create something there. Yeah. Good. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I've got all this about the canvas, so it's uh, superior from what you have demonstrated and said. Then the, the other thing, you know, most of us, we like uh, free things. So when I go and download uh, the carbon copy, I'm not paying for. But don't you think, uh, I don't know how long it has been around, they may be releasing something like batches, or they are fixing some bugs, so if my own is free version, I may not have access to be able to download all those patches or fixing the box. Don't you think at some point uh, I will just be left with the version I downloaded as at that time, if any other time they move on or uh, increase the version, I may so not you have access. So you don't need to download Canva. So Canva is a web application, like what I'm using, I've not downloaded in my system. I just go to www.canva.com and then you do all we've done today. You're not downloading, so you are always updated with the, the most recent versions, right? So as they're making those ups, you are getting them. So you don't need to download Canva. Everything they have a download version, like, because I've never been told to download, I will have it completely in my system, right? So, this is the web application, right? This is the web application. You are not downloading it like, oh, I'm downloading it to have it, right? So um, all you need to do is just go to Canva, the concrete your account and start working, basically. So you don't need to be expecting whatever. And when you mean that nothing is free, I bet to differ, there are a lot of things that are free, a whole lot of things that are free in the tech world that that might does not necessarily that meets does not necessarily work, right? So you don't need to there are a lot of free stuffs online. There are a lot of organizations working to make sure that almost everything in the internet is completely free. And uh, why profit making organizations are fighting that. But there are a lot of free stuffs. And even in the free stuffs, they have other ways they are making their money around it. And this thing that we are doing. I want to delete there are a lot of person that will not delete it because they like what they've seen there and it's a universal thing one dollar might be expensive for us but there one dollar is nothing to them so if they need this picture they are not deleting it they'll just stay paid one dollar get get done with it so they are making their money they have bought billions of dollars and let's let's forget about if it's not free or not it, it has been free for so many years and it will still be free okay good i got that then lastly i know when you are trying to we'll, we'll raise questions with the uh, yes lastly on what you have uh, said uh, from what you demonstrated when i'm saving because since it's a web application when i'm saving my work it gives me room to save it to my desktop or my laptop right yes exactly So when you're downloading, you're downloading to yourself, right? You're downloading to your device. So you can download and wherever you want to keep it, you keep it to any folder you want to keep it. So you're downloading to where you used to download, to appear where you download stuff, not downloading to the Canva profile. You downloaded to your own device. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, thank you. And Mr. Samuel, please. That's the last question.
Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I hope good you can afternoon. hear me. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. I want to just uh, uh, say, okay, first of all, let me thank you for the presentation, um, for the okay, for the management of the session. Thank you. 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 Thank you know uh, it's not everybody that are like to really uh, computer uh, literate as such you know some they just know the basic so talking about this camp some people they cannot even they don't even know how to use the powerpoint i'll talk about uh, the canva that is like uh, maybe more advanced technique or something so i would i would like just want to like say that i don't know if it will be possible to attach somebody like a maybe like a supervisor to supervise or to put somebody through more in both the preparation of the project, you know, choosing topic, the project, and also be able to scrape through all these uh, audios because it's, uh, it's uh, uh, easier said than practicing it. So I know the gathering like this and asking questions like this is not something that is of every time. So I don't know. I would like, maybe want to ask that. Let maybe there should be a supervisor for each person so that at least you can know who to run to. Please, I'm not getting this. Person can easily also get something to in which you also that have done the presentation can also be involved or something. So that is my own uh, suggestion and like something like a question. Thank you. Okay, I think um, uh, Mr. Devon will throw more light on that. But um, for all I know, your instructor have been tasked to make sure that you get it right with your project so if you want to call in like your supervisor it's fine but your instructor have been tasked to make sure you get it right so um and then when it gets to the point where you also need help like oh you can reach out to mr Bebe. Okay, i need help here so he will know one who to reach out to to also be of help even in your presentation you might send in your slides and you are not comfortable with it okay. we will reach out to you and then also find a way to make sure that you get it right okay sorry or maybe i missed it i don't know did i have a personal instructor or something personal instructor or this batch this current batch your instructor Okay, the instructor for this current batch, that is uh, yes. the person that has been giving us lectures all this while. Yes, the person that has been doing your Saturday class will okay. be the one to make sure that you get it right with whatever you're doing as you list your okay. But that person now, I don't I, I don't think the, the person has not released his personal contact or something to her to us before. It's only, it's only Mr. Bebe that we have been communicating with all this while directly. Yeah, so personal contact should be between you and the person right so if you've been in his class you could be like sir please i need your contact i don't think that's a problem for him okay uh, that means I, we can get it from uh, mr bebet then because he's the only one that we have with uh, this yes you can meet mr bebet so mr bebet will find a way to make the instructor know that he's giving you his contact to reach out so yes that's also possible Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all, right. all right, gentlemen. Every other question, please, Mr. Weber will answer. I am good to go. All the best. Yeah, bye. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, uh, thank you. Can we now talk with Mr. Weber? Okay. Um, okay, yeah, we can. We can go ahead with the question with me. If there's some okay. questions you have on the yes. Because still have okay. Uh, Mr. Velvet, uh, thanks so much for giving me this audience. I know some time ago I was bothered that I uh, hope I'm not being left out in what is happening on this uh, short course. You know, um, I, I need to be on the same page because uh, I mentioned something like, uh, is it two weeks ago that uh, there was something on the project? I'm not aware of that. For quite a long time, this is the 
lesson that I, were, I was given a, a link, a class given a link to attend. So I've not been getting any uh, prompt or any signal or any link to attend any class. So I'm not aware if there was a discussion concerning projects. I'm just getting to know today. That is one thing. Uh, the other thing I want to say again, I know when we're registering for the course, we're told to pick a project topic that will be grouped in a team. I don't know if that arrangement is still going to work or it has been altered. So I just really, and then you said you will make something available consigning the project. I just want to be on the same page so that I'm not left out in anything. Thank you so much. I'm also, I'm also to, I also, it's also what I want to ask. So we also answer together. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so um, for I'll first of all answer the questions that were thrown before. One of them is um, in one of the uh, one of the students asked a question concerning the um, if the project should also have um have the predictions for when you are pushing up of your projects. Yes, it, you can make them like you can also add predictions based on your findings. That is why that is why you're a data analyst. That is what you do. You the analyze the data, you visualize, and then you give constructive and futuristic. Um, I mean, you're using the word futuristic. I mean, the word um, achievable um, um, suggestions or predictions that okay, this is based on what you've done. This is what you predict. So that's why you're a data analyst, and that's what you do. It's not about the visualizing, analyzing. No, it's about giving them the results. And you have had the result. This is what you predict that at this particular time. This is how it's going to be, or if you use this particular medium, this is what you get. That's why you're, you're a data analyst. Then in terms of um, the time of projects, um, of course, we gave you guys, based on based on what we, we are doing, we, we, the course is a three months course, right? But because of the because of the election, we had to do some little extension of time so that everybody will be back from their travels and all of that. So we even had a one month extension for that before we now started back um, properly, all right? So that's why um, you're having till now. So the the um, project um, project timing has a time frame. From now, you can start up with your, your project topic and keep working on them. So when it's time for us to release, we put it on a two weeks notes, but we feel that you should be able to do, get your data and do everything and analyze them fast. But in case, um, we will look at based on everybody's um, Performance and other persons have got their project topic and have the time they are supposed to do it. Then we cannot see if we can make an extension. But what we want is that we want to make sure that you guys finish this whole program on time so that you can actually use your certificates for other things that you actually wanted to do before now. Then I'm going to answer that of the project supervisor. Mr. Imani just um, said that. Um, yeah, Mr. Izeke, for now, will be serving as the project supervisor. You are going to be reaching out to him. With respect to um, anything that's to do with project, um, project um, findings, or you're having someone or two challenges on your project and you want him to assist you. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to him, all right, for him to release his contacts for everybody on the Slack channel so that uh, people can, um, can actually have a conversation with him. And then, if possible, I can also send that um, across to you guys so that you can, um, you can reach out to him too directly. Now, in the aspect of the question you just asked now, in terms of um, the whole um, sit, um, the whole um, uh, time for meetings and all of that, if you were not carried along, yeah, we actually had a lot of a pause due to the election, and then we sent a. Although I didn't, I did, I did forward a mail to everybody, but uh, that was why I had to make sure that um, I that was a lapse on my own part the last time for the um, live session for the project um, exposition. Although. Message was a, a mail was a message was sent to the Slack channel. Of course, we know that's one of the places where we have lots of our conversation, and that's where we drop um, information as fast as we can. All right, so um, that was the only time I know we didn't send a mail for you guys to know that we had that last um, meeting. But the record of it was done, so we can actually share that across to everybody, um, so that we all can um, can can have that. And then, um, in terms of the project, um, the project um, topic you guys collect, um, selected when you before you started the program. Yeah, that was more like a, to have a cluster information and all of that. All right. So we didn't really implement that because we wanted you guys to just get acquainted to the whole 
learning system all right the the project cluster we wanted to do is not like you're going to be doing projects together everybody will focus one project no it's just for easy communication amongst yourself while you are learning you can ask your fellow um, cohort or your fellow um top um the same person in the same cluster and ask them questions you can help but from what we saw on the general channel we saw that that was still working fine while anybody that asked questions the students also respond to those questions but what we can still do is to provide like i said i was supposed i was going to send you guys those particular project topics that maybe you, some of you might have forgotten them so i'm going to be dropping them for you guys to check all right to assess those project topics all right so the essence of that cohort or cluster we wanted to do for you guys was for easy communication amongst yourself collaboration and all of that so it's still active so i can we can still do all of that and since you guys are already communicating amongst yourself you may not be in the same um, project you may not have, have the same project topic but you guys are you guys know yourselves right now where you guys can communicate among yourselves as you did from the beginning of the program all right so that's why it's just why we do not really because we know that the aim of the of the cluster was for you guys to collaborate and we were we already saw that that was actually happening in the general channel so we didn't really push for um all of those and because that topic was just for you to do your own personal projects everybody is selling themselves personally and all of that so it's not a group thing you will not project a group project to, uh, to an employer that wants to employ you because you guys need to be group no they want to see what you can do as a person so that's what it is everybody will be doing their project independently not in a group i don't know if that answers your questions okay Nothing. All right, thank you. Uh, Moses, you have a question? Your hand is too raised up. Or oh, that's an old hand. Okay, so I think. Um, Hello? I think, yeah, 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 yeah. That's not. That's a new hand right away. Not <laughs> okay, all right, go ahead, please. Okay, my question is uh, I'm sorry right now. I've been using my uh, Anaconda to do to be studying and all those words. Right now, when I try to, to open the Anaconda, it's not opening again. It's just showing me some, some how it called, command prompt. It's itself. So I don't know what's the problem. I don't know. And um, this is what I've been using since last year. So instead of loading to, to, to open a uh, digital lab, it's no longer doing that like that. I don't know what's happening. I just uh, I just wanted to ask you there's something I don't know that is happening or you can help me with that. Okay. Um first of all, I'm not a data analyst and I'm not gonna use hmm? that too. But right here, I think um anybody here that can ask answer that question can do that for me. If anybody can assist here, or but better still, what I would advise is um you can um which are to easy care. I will tell him just send a message to, to the general channel on Slack now and drop okay. you your issue there. Then I will call, I will um, attest to it and get Mr. Ezekiel okay. to respond to you. Okay. So that's what um, I wanted to do. But if anybody have an answer to that, uh, what could be the reason? Maybe your maybe it's the version of I don't know. I haven't really really used that particular tool. All right. So I'm just organizing the whole course thing. Like I'm not a I'm not a guitar analyst. Okay. Okay. So so the second question is uh how the, our our opportunities after this the whole after this process okay. now. Yeah, that is why that, that that is why you need to make sure your presentation is on point because when we will have that um, there's a demo day for you guys to do your presentation like present what you've done. So in that particular demo day we would have different um people companies um partner institutions and then all of them will be some of them will be available on that meeting while it will still be recorded so these are the things that they will look at for the way you did your presentation and the way you found that if you will make your findings and everything so um they will make that choice of okay this is the person that wants them the do whatever they want to do like they do um an exam assessment to so know who you are and then they have an interview with you and see how you can come in yeah. so there's opportunity is still there even working with our company too is still there even with the school the opportunity to work as a data analyst for the school 
um, some interns still available for people that we feel yes we'd also want to drive um, more and also we still have more opportunities for you guys not just as a data manager but people are more like um, you guys can still have um, assist the other um, co the other um, batches coming in because it's like more like a batches so you can come in as a, just like um, um, the um, Mr. this person um, suggested um, on the system um, yeah, Mr. Samuel was just like it's just there in terms of having uh, supervisors and all of that. So we can assume some of you to become supervisor where we see that you are actually doing very well. So it's what you've done now. You can still be doing as a supervisor to help the new to the system. So I'm sorry for the noise. I think there's less nice line inside. So we can we can actually um, get get you guys on board on that. All right. So. Don't worry, the opportunities are still here for you. Okay, so so will the presentation be be the same thing as the examination? No, no, it's not the, no, it's not the, uh, the exam. It's like what we are doing now, live in live presentation. Okay, so it comes before the, the examination. It comes, yeah, it comes before the examination. We may still look at it ba based on your time of submission of the um, of your project. The exam will come bef after before the project project event. But for now, we are looking at the defense come before the final exam. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, the exam will be on uh, on live uh, section like this. The exam no the exam is like the normal exam you're doing, but this time around it will be monitored. It will be to be a the proctored, proctored exam. Whereby okay. your camera will be on and then the system will automatically record everything you're doing. While you're taking the oh. exam, live session currently, um, but there will be a mock exam for you to prepare you guys for the main exam. Currently, the mm -hmm. November batch are currently doing their mock, all right. So, you guys will also do a mock exam just to get you guys acquainted to the whole learning phase so that when you start for the main exam, you already know how the questions will look like. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, I think that's all, um, that's all we have for now. Um, Hello, uh, Velvet. Yeah. My hand is up too. Okay. Yes, Hello, I, Velvet. Yes, Peter, go ahead. Yes. Uh, you know, since it's uh, self-paced learning, as yes. we are giving a time to submit the project, I'm beginning to have some uneasy feeling that what if I'm not able to get my project ready as at the deadline of the time given for okay. submission of the project. That is one. Then uh, two, I don't know if you are the best person to talk to since you are not a data analyst on the exam. I was just hoping that uh, on the exam we'll be able to use, like if I'm using an anaconda, because sometimes one think of those library or those words and there is a mistake. When you click, you see error, you correct yourself. If the exam is such, whatever you write is just once, you cannot edit it. I don't know how it will look like because we cannot be doing cramming, cramming, cramming. How much can work from? Okay, okay, I get. Um, the exam is not necessarily going to be um, making mistakes. It's a one time exam, all right? And if you don't pass it at that first time, of course, you can still redo, but not immediately. You have to join the next, next set. So if you are not able to finish up a project now, you can still um, look at going to the next batch to join them to do their presentation. You understand? So we're not telling you that you must do it now. If you're not good, if you're not able to do it at that time, so you can always extend it to the next batch. When they have the next um, presentation for projects, you can join them with that particular that. But it's an online something, so everybody will be coming in one after the other to, to defend online. So everybody have their time, would have their schedule, and then that's how it's going to be. All right, so I don't know if that answered your question. Okay. Yes, uh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. I hope, I hope the project will just be if I've taken it and I'm submitting with another batch, it will not change. It's still, it still remain what I have picked. Yes, it is. Yeah, we can thank go you. ahead, Mr. The IPOS family, the IPUS family. Please go ahead. Yeah, the, the last class, I was uh, unavoidably absent last okay. Saturday. Yeah. So I could not follow up. And I was hoping that maybe I dropped a message that you should record it. Yeah, up to now, we have not. 
yeah, Mr. Ezekiel had a record of that. So once it's, I'm gonna get it from him and then forward it to everybody. Yeah, I think I think I did that. I think we. I will check. I think I've sent a message regarding that that meeting, that record. I think I've dropped it, but I will check to add it up to the main to the main course itself. Uh, was it um was it just a review of the last module or there were other things that were said there were other class? things that were said there were other things it started with the exposition before they went to the review of, before they went to the last module review so they started with the project exposition and how to go around it okay, so. okay i think that's one major thing that i missed the project exposition and the preliminary part of the class uh, no problem. Um, I will talk to Mr. Isaac about that. And then, like I said, if there's a possibility for us to still have a revision session to what the project, I think, um, is not something that will be massive. It's just doing what you do from your what you've learned. So I think what the way the program was, the course outline was organized, was more like done in a project format as if you're executing a particular project. How you get your data, you clean your data, you analyze your data, you visualize your data, all of those different modes will be more like steps to take when time to do your own. Um, so it's just the same thing you will be doing. And then at the end, just make your presentation like 10, 12 slides, you're done. Get your finding what you did and everything and make your little positions you want to do. And I think you're good. And the, the is the, the project roundup uh, pro, um, event that you just sent? I'm seeing a project submission 22nd, and is it the final submission? I'm not seeing a presentation yet. It starts. It starts on the 22nd. Is there no? Is there no? There's a demo day on that on that PDF there. Okay, 22nd. Okay. Did you see anything like a demo day? No, there's no okay yes i can see project demo day yeah, that's on the 6th of your, may yeah, that's when you're going to do your presentation so but now wait to... now now you will have a item for project submission 22nd april and then the demo day project demo day is on when the 6th the, of may when is the when is, Are we... there's a start and end time on that when is the start and end time of that project submission okay project submission 22nd of April is a start date and the 29th of April is the end date. Okay, so you can start submitting. And then are we going now. to submit before the demo? Yes, you will submit it before the demo day. Okay, we are going to submit. I don't know if we are going, going to submit to... the PDF. You're going to submit the PDF, your findings, like that PDF, your presentation, that way you're submitting. So on the project demo day, we just give a little exposition of what you did. We have the PDF, we would have gone through it before you even did your presentation. All right, so you just have to just come in and just give us a good oh, okay. uh, Let me get this, uh, this uh, project uh, issue clearly. Like, for instance, myself, I chose uh, to do a project on data exploration, okay. exploratory data analysis. Okay. Now, will I just find any data? and do any form of exploratory analysis i know that can be done and and, and submit okay what 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 um, i will tell mr Ezekiel to do for you guys to so give you guys i thought i don't know if he has done that already we're going to share with you guys how to get data all right yes so you will show you guys how to get your data how to find data either on the internet or where you want to get it from so that's what I was asking. Yes. That at least uh, Mr. Ezekiel will be like Yes, I'm gonna give you guys a guide on how to um source your data. So that means me that I've chosen data exploration. You when can I still get change it, it. You can still change it if you want. Uh, right. Yes, yes. I, no, yeah. I don't want to change it. Okay. I just want to get uh, clarification on, on what I understand and what is expected for me to submit. Oh, okay. Um, so I, so now. I will yeah. just once I get the data, I will just do exploratory anal analysis and submit it, right? Yes, okay. It's okay. So I can that make agreements and discuss with uh, Mr. Ezekiel on the topic I will work on, right? 
Yes, yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. If you have, if you have um, anything you want to really do, um, to make it better for you, your project, so why you can okay. reach out to Ezekiel. We will give you guys that um, support you need. All right. Okay. So that's what you okay. But my challenge is whether maybe I will discuss that one with uh, Mr. Ezekiel. How to get data? Where we, we, which source of data? All those kind of talk. That is. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's my. Mr. Ezekiel will give you guys. I I think we will send a link on different places to get data. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So I think that is it. Um. Um. I'm uh, sure. Sorry. Sorry. This um. This submission, they have shown us how to do to to construct a pre a, a PDF from Canva. Yes. I don't know if we are going to submit the final copy from I, what we are going to generate on Canva or when we when we do it, it we are going to submit something like a notebook that we usually uh, do analysis from uh, from Anaconda uh, Navigator. So what what that present what you're sending to us for now is the presentation of what you find what you did of all your then at the end after the after the uh, the general certificate exam you will be required to send a complete a complete um copy of your what you did or a full project like maybe even more like in this prayer binded with microsoft word or whichever we including the syntax that you use in your findings you will still be you will still submit that not if it's not um printed but online the soft copy all right you also be required to send all of that for us to see so that you don't get you don't get a project online and give it to us and we assume it's yours. No, we still get the syntax of um the complete project how you went around the whole thing from the beginning to the end of the project. But that will not be that will not be a limitation for your demo day. If your demo day, you're only sending us the slides. You use that to do your demo day. Then before the certificate exam or after the certificate exam, then you will be required to send the complete set of our projects. Are you it's all right then. thank all you right. for that yeah thanks a lot everyone um okay thank you so much yeah well done everyone thanks for your time we guys have a wonderful weekend everyone thank you so when are we hearing from you now you i thought this evening or, or monday we'll be updating you guys on what the next phase is as, as okay for so. monday yes, Sir, please don't forget our project topics okay thank you <laughs> all right no problem you're welcome all right. Okay.